they um, proceeded to uh, give themselves manginas. Um, they, they were nude at the time, we should have noticed that. I had nothing to do with mangina gate. Look, I don't want to talk about mangina gate. I was not associated with mangina gate. I didn't ask for a mangina. When the cops came round to the caravan. I mean, we put our hands up straight away. What was the atmosphere like around Christchurch ahead of that, that Cricket World Cup? That was remember? huge. The, the atmosphere around Christchurch before the World Cup, that opener at Hagley Oval, was, was huge. It was the first time that New Zealand had hosted a World Cup event, obviously since 1991, 1992, which was massively successful. Yeah, if I remember rightly, the atmosphere in Christchurch before that big opener World Cup well, it was, was electric. Um, you can cut it with an electric carving knife. Look, I'll be honest with you, I don't know because I was into my prep before the game. Um, I like to do six or seven hours prep before each game uh, and I just left the lads to it. But apparently the atmosphere is very good, very positive. The atmosphere at the ground was cracking. It was a beautiful day. People of Christchurch were going off and we were pretty excited to, to be involved. We couldn't believe we were there for a start, but um, we soon found out that we wouldn't be welcome. <laughs> couldn't find accommodation. The only accommodation we could find in Christchurch for that first game was um, a old leaker apartment above Tony's tyres. And there was some kind of incident happening in a house next door where, where, where the police should have probably been brought in. I'm not sure if they weren't, I can't remember, but I do remember there was a lot of doors open um, there was a lot of dudes in a very small accommodation. Which I think was a, probably a centre for people either producing meth or high users of meth. And some of the lads, I won't name names, um, went out in the town on the lash. We decided just not to come home. We'd stay up most of the night and come home, get a couple of hours of sleep and then, then head off. There are rumours about uh, adult venues. Oh, uh, strip, oh yeah. What I do remember, yes I do remember, um, I do remember a lot of poles, um, or either at a scaffolding company or, a, or a, yeah, it was a strip bar, it was, yeah, okay, well, we, we were there. That's just a matter of course for the ACC, I mean, as I say, I never indulged in that sort of stuff, it was more your lanes, your hearts. But again, you've got to understand the pressure we're under, you know, to, to deliver the next day and that was one way to uh, to absorb some of that pressure and and I think it was the only bar that was still open at that time anyway so we, we naturally just kind of gravitated toward it it wasn't a conscious effort it's just hard the next day you know trying to you know pay for hot dogs and pies and stuff with, with calendar girl money. Do you remember where the caravan was positioned? First of all it was it was almost out in the catering area so we were facing the back of a, a hill we could not see one player on the field. We couldn't see anything. It was almost positioned out of the ground. It looked straight into the back of a broadcast area, I think. And it was like it was isolated as well. They put it out on its own. We weren't even next to anything. It was just this like beacon. We were right across from the toilets. And so everybody who was on that embankment who was getting drunk had to pass past our caravan. And it seemed every single person stopped by and said something. The positioning of the caravan's always been a controversial Thing. We were dealing with the ICC and that was an interesting proposition as well because they didn't know about the ACC, they didn't know about the Alternative Commentary Collective. I think the other media got together and they said look we can't have this and they put us um, pretty much out of sight, out of mind thinking you know if, if they can't see us they can't hear us but they were wrong because we still broadcast it. Can you remember any technical difficulties that, we're, that the ACC suffered that day? There was one major technical difficulty that the ACC suffered that day, and that was that we didn't have any thing. And obviously not being able to see the game physically, which was very a big part of it for the ball by ball guys. When you're talking about animal facts and stats, you don't really need to see anything. But the ball by ball guys, they need to see what's going on. So we, we had TV screens, and if I remember rightly, they weren't even working. We had to sort of just imagine um, what would be happening. So there was quite a few overs where we were just um, absolutely making it up. We were so far away from the cameras that nobody had a cable long enough that would run from our caravan to any of the cameras. And ACC head G Lane was running around like a man possessed, so focused. Oh my God, the technical difficulties. So now normally we can see the game and we can commentate if we don't get a signal. But the fact we had no TV signal and we were out and back in the catering backstaff area, we couldn't see anything. 
No one had provided us a cable. And when we asked people, can we, you know, we've agreed with the ICC that we're going to be brought, and everyone would go, well, I don't know, mate, you're going to have to get a cable and run it up that um, tower there and plug it into a camera. And I was like, that tower is like 150 metres away from us. He goes, and the guy's like, you know, it's like, where can I get cable? And he goes, oh, there might be some, they sell some in the broadcast compound. <laughs> so I go over there with a work credit card, and I was like, I need 200 metres of Cat 5. And the guy's like, what? And I just said, just give me that whole reel there. So we had a whole, the whole reel was a 200 metre reel of uh, Cat 5. I gave him like 500 bucks, whatever, I didn't care. At that stage, it was 10 minutes before the start of the Cricket World Cup and we had no signal. We had to get the cable from the caravan up the tower above the bowler's arm and into a camera. So first of all, we had to get the cable there. Then we had to convince the cameraman to let us, let some fuckwit in a Hallenstein suit to plug a cord into his camera. There was cable being pulled up, there was cable being laid, there were things being plugged, there was negotiations with Sky cameras, there was officials trying to kick us out. At one point Richard Hadley walked past, he was very nice. So I eventually get up there, this guy's, I annoy him until I plug in the output into his thing and we got a signal. Can you recall any visitors to the caravan that day on that opening match? Uh, Jerry Brownlee. He came in, for example, and when I say big name, he's, a, he's kind of a, a big, big, well, he's a, he's a big guy. And this is a small caravan. Had we been towing or moving the caravan at that time, it would have been illegal. He was actually put up by Jonathan Coleman, who suggested that he should come along. He didn't know anything about the ACC, so he thought he was actually involved in a proper broadcast. He unfortunately had Lee Baker and Jeremy Wells on with him, who just went at him, just went at him about when he lost his virginity. Virginity, yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor old Jerry being very uncomfortable with the line of questioning, but uh, old Baker had to go there. Yeah, he wouldn't even admit that he'd ever even made love. In the end, we just tried to narrow down Jerry Brownlee's virginity to a North Island or a South Island, and he refused to even tell us. North or South Island for a start? Well, well I think, firstly, this is not really something that I should be giving advice on, uh, because despite Jeremy's uh, suggestions earlier, it's not something I have great expertise in. Well, that's not what I've heard. I, mean, I heard that you're a demon in the sack. Yeah. <laughs> in the end, we concluded he hasn't lost his virginity. You've got kids, mate. You're bound to have, surely. Can you explain Mangina Gate and the visit from the police to the caravan? In hindsight, it was very eventful in many ways. A lot going on in the field, a lot going on in the caravan, and a lot going on around the caravan. It seems to attract um, controversy wherever it goes. Um, Ma Mangina Gate, for example. I had nothing to do with Mangina Gate. Look, I don't want to talk about Mangina Gate. I was not associated with Mangina Gate. I didn't instigate Mangina Gate. I didn't, I didn't ask for a Mangina. Yeah, that was an interesting one. That was with Lee Hart and myself, I believe, um, and someone took a photo of us and in the background of our photo were some lads doing the old mangina. This was um, three or four guys, I think accosted Jason, myself, while we were wandering around outside getting some fresh air and they came over and grabbed a few selfies and stuff, which was great. You know, we love that stuff. Um, and then they um, proceeded to give themselves manginas. Um, they, they were nude at the time, we should have noticed that. And then the cops came round to the caravan um, to discuss some lewd activity that had been going on. and They said, oh, there's been reports of nudity. I mean, we put our hands up straight away. Generally, if there was anything lewd going on, it was us. Um, word spread around that there was, man, there was manginas being pulled everywhere in front of kids and all sorts. It wasn't the first time, but I think that day, the police paid a visit to the caravan and, and explained that um, we can't be inciting manginas and that sort of stuff around the stadium, which we weren't. You know, you know what it's like in, in New Zealand, you start a Mexican wave nowadays, they probably throw you out of the stadium. But back then, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't just encourage people to do manginas or, or anything like that, really. So it's a different time. A different time. Was that the inspiration for the mangina, manginas of cricket calendar? The cricketing manginas of New Zealand calendar did actually come out of, the, out of this incident because word spread about the photo and the photo got put on social media and I think it had to get pulled down because I think one of them worked in the media and got in trouble. But word spread around cricketing manginas and that summer we got sent photos of people in full mangina but playing 
beautiful cricket shots with a mangina or bowling with a mangina. And so we got so many of them, we, just, we created a calendar. Uh, you know, we had, you know, Mr. June, Mr. May, all that stuff. It was, I mean, it didn't sell a lot, but um, it certainly sent our web numbers through the roof. slamming beers and like having a party outside the caravan. They were watching us very, very carefully. Mike went and got a tractor. It was in a perfect position for me to chew my face off. I don't know whether it was the nose kai. Like some sort of demented zombie. Something could go wrong here today. And it was way too close for comfort. I don't think that tractor's moving.